This video is sponsored by Actively Learn and we've included highlights of some third-party tools that are worth a look. As educators, we are told that we need to provide multiple ways for students to access the information in our lessons. But knowing exactly how to do that can be challenging. Learning how to get rid of barriers for students as they are reading a text or learning how to get rid of barriers to students as they are writing on a digital document or learning how to get rid of some of the barriers of working on math in a digital space makes your classroom a place where your students have a lot more opportunity to succeed. So let's take a look at some useful, accessible tools for your classroom for reading, writing, and math. For creating more accessible reading assignments, use Actively Learn. Actively Learn lets you assign articles to your students from a variety of different subjects and topics, and you can choose the articles based on the reading level of your students. Seeing an entire article and then having to answer comprehension questions after they read the entire article can feel overwhelming for a lot of students, especially for your struggling readers. What's pretty unique about Actively Learn is that the text is chunked and broken up by formative questions throughout the text. So the student reads a little bit, answers a formative question, and then the next part of the text is shown up on screen and they can continue to move on, giving them the opportunity to self-assess as they are reading the text and see, am I tracking along with what I'm reading, as opposed to waiting till they're at the end of the text to begin to answer formative questions. As the teacher, you can use and edit the questions that are pre-built into the actively learn articles and texts, or you can add your own short answer, multiple choice, or polling questions. These highlights right here are where the author or the teacher can add some context to new words or new ideas that are found throughout the text. And I remember when I was in school and I would be reading a new passage, I would be front loaded with this key vocabulary before I even read the question, most of which I had no context for even understanding what it meant. And so for students to be able to be exposed to those new words or those new ideas as they are reading it is far more effective in increasing their actual comprehension of these new words. If a student highlights a word, they can hear the word read aloud. Stately. They can get the word defined, and they can get the word translated. And if you highlight an entire phrase or paragraph, you can get that whole thing read to you. Then the king gave way to wrath. Or translated. Also, students can change the spacing of the text. They can change the text size. They can change the font that is used in the text. They can adjust the background. They can turn paragraph or page numbering on or off, which can make it a lot easier for referencing certain parts of the passage. And they can enable a dyslexic setting if they are a student with dyslexia to make the text a lot more accessible to them. And what's really cool is if you've got your own Google Doc or slide or you find an article online that is not a part of the actively learned library already, you can import that and then add your questions and your highlights and do all the other stuff that we were talking about to that imported article or document. When you sign up, you're gonna be asked what you teach. And so if you pick science, then you will have access to the science content specifically. All the features that I've mentioned so far are a part of the free plan for teachers with the only thing having a limitation is the import feature where you're limited to three imports a month of other documents or websites that are not already part of the actively learned library. With their Prime plan, it gives you access to even more of their content related to the subject that you teach, as well as unlimited exports of your own documents or other websites, and a lot more. A lot of these accessibility lists that you find online have tons of tools for accessibility in reading. And I do have one more reading accessibility tool that I'll mention at the end of the video, but I do wanna explore a super useful writing accessibility tool in an app that you're probably already using, but maybe not to its fullest potential. Google Docs is not typically an app that you think about when you think about accessibility. But when it comes to making writing more accessible to all your students, Google Docs has a ton of features that I didn't know about for a long time, so perhaps you do not know about them either. So here they are. Under the tools menu, you will find voice typing. The interesting thing about this voice typer is that it is fairly accurate and you can even pause and think about what you want to say and the keyboard is still fully functional so if you make a if you make a if you make a mistake you can just pause and delete anything that you don't need 
And if you have students whose native language is not English, it is very likely that their language is in the list of voice typing options and they can utilize this feature as well. And with that, your English language learners can then use the translate document feature and be able to just get their ideas out and on paper and translate it. And the translation won't be perfect, but it's gonna be such a great starting point for the student. And you've removed such a huge barrier when it comes to getting their thoughts and ideas out onto paper. Another feature that's a little bit hidden is the templates gallery. It's hard to start with a blank page. Templates will give your students a nice starting point, whether it be for an essay, a science report, or class notes. Things are already formatted nicely on the templates. The colors and the fonts look really good together. And you're removing that barrier of just getting started for so many students by providing the templates. Often when I had students researching and putting their work in Google Docs, they would end up having to leave Google Docs to find something in Google Drive or to look something up on the web or to find an image that they wanted to use, usually resulting in them getting distracted and losing momentum in their work. You can actually have students do all of those things without leaving the Google Doc. In the tools section, you'll see an option for explore. And so let's say a student is researching robots. They type the word robot and then they can see anything in their Google Drive that's related to robots. They can see Google search results that does not have any ads for robots. And if they end up using any of those search results and need to cite one of those search results, they can do that with just the click of a button and it throws a footnote citation on their document. And they can see Google image results right in that explore panel and pretty easily just select a photo that they want to bring into their document. So streamlined and so helpful for all of your students and probably for you as well. For making reading and writing math on a computer more accessible, Equatio is the tool for you. Equatio is really powerful in all the different ways that it allows students to write math on a computer. In addition to being able to do the traditional law tech way of programming a math equation, students can actually write out their math using a mouse or a pen tablet, and it turns it into a digital math equation that they can put on their document. On the free plan, you're limited to two handwriting inserts a day, but a workaround for that is don't actually hit the insert equation button, but instead just take the equation that it made, make a screenshot of it, and then paste your screenshot into your document and you haven't used up one of your official inserts. And you can also speak your equation into existence. They do have a guide on how to speak some of the more complex equations, but it's really cool because even if it makes a small mistake, you can just go in there and make the adjustments that you need and then use that equation in your document. For the Chrome extension version of Equatio, the free plan lets you use Equatio in Google Docs or Microsoft Word online. And the premium version allows you to use it in just about any Google application, just about any Microsoft online application and even several learning management systems. The premium plan also gives you access to the screenshot reader, which can read any math equation anywhere on the internet. So let's say you created a tutorial video for your students and you're even handwriting the math in the tutorial video. Your student can pause the video, enable the screenshot reader, select the portion of the screen that has the handwritten math. And mind you, this is in a video. <laughs> and Equatio will read that equation out loud. 30 over 100 equals X over 70. And allow the student to take that equation, manipulate it, and bring it into their document that they're working on. It's not copying and pasting an image, it's actually reading the math and turning it into readable, editable, digital math. So much faster than having them try to figure out how to program it in LaTeX or how to use the Google Equation Builder, which those tools can be super time consuming. And a lot of times a student just loses the flow of trying to work on the math because they're trying to figure out how to actually show the math digitally on their computer. And on the premium plan, the students can integrate Equatio with their phone. So if they're working on their computer on Equatio and then they go and work out a problem on a piece of paper, they can just scan a QR code with their phone and then take a picture of the work on their paper and then Equatio Equatio will just turn that into digital math that they can just put right on the document that they're working on. The pricing model of Equatio has some pretty awesome premium features and a more limited free version. The premium is free for all K-12 teachers, which is awesome. But if you want your students to have access to the premium version, you do have to get a minimum of 150 licenses at $10 per student. 
So this is definitely not something to pay out of your own pocket, but have your school pay for it if the Equasio Premium features are something that you want your students to have access to. And as promised, I do have one bonus reading accessibility tool for you. The same company that developed Equasio also developed a tool called Read and Write. Read and Write gives students reading accessibility tools wherever they want them, anywhere on the internet, and not just on articles that you happen to assign to them. A student comes across a page, enables the Read and Write extension, highlights the section they want read to them, and then clicks play. Use this guide to explore different strategies for using education technology to meet the evolving needs of our students. Read and Write can run on Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, or as a standalone Mac, Windows, or iPad app. Using these four apps is gonna help you eliminate a ton of barriers to learning for your students. And if you wanna learn more on how to meet the various needs of your students, then you wanna check out this video right here where Sam gets into what it takes to reach all students. We'll see you over there.